everyone. This is Martin Pitella for Life Enthusiast Podcast. And today with me is Richard Presser, Dr. Richard Presser. And uh, we're going to be talking about nanosoma. Welcome, Richard, to the Life Enthusiast. Martin, thank you. Thank you for your invitation and for making the time available for us to share this information with your audience. Yeah, I'm particularly excited about this. Uh, uh, the audience knows I've been at this for 20 plus years online and 40 plus years lifetime. And uh, you don't get me out of my slumber very easily. But I, I have now, I'm on the fourth bottle and uh, I feel confident that this thing is worth everyone's attention because it put me on my back legs, so to speak. So Richard, um, we'll get to the personal history in a bit, but first, would you mind just talking about why the listener should actually pay attention here? Uh, any of you listening should pay attention to this because what Martin is bringing to you is literally a transformation in human health in a spray bottle. And for any of us, I think that's pretty interesting news. And as Martin said, he's been at this for 40 years. And I have to say, I honor this man's courage because he has recognized that this little piece of natural magic will probably with time destroy his existing business. But he's jumped on board because he understands the truth of what's being brought to him here. So I honor you, Martin, I have to say. Very Thank brave you. man. Yeah, yeah. I'm I've been in management consulting before my health career, and uh, we learned that the businesses that do not eat their own uh, main line end up losing it. I mean, look at look at yes. Xerox, look at Hewlett Packard, look at IBM. I mean, those were yes. my examples from technology, but yes. because Kodak, because they thought that they could simply stick with what they knew. And the classic illustration from the tech industry who is who did it as a matter of course was Steve Jobs. Yes. It's one of his philosophies was to uh, be the one who um, um, retires your product. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah, kill your <laughs> kill your own kill business your own young. or yes. someone kills it for you. Yes, exactly. Right. So, well, okay. I mean, we have a cute little bottle. I mean, it's nothing much. It's, uh, is it 30 milliliters? Yes. Yeah. And uh, it comes with a very sweet little sprayer on top. You know, it's, it's very unassuming and you just push this little plunger and that's how it works. Now in it is 97% water. So again, <laughs> But it's not any other water. Well, let's talk about what does it do for the person? Let's talk about that first. Uh, yeah, so what this does, uh, in a sense, is reset your body, resets it back to the original blueprint, including your DNA. When you put this in the body, it's like this little particle um, or this nano emulsion, it really is, uh, and your body conduct a triage. And whatever is life-threatening gets dealt with first. Whatever's down the line gets dealt with in due course. So simply put, when you put this in your body, uh, this nanosoma doesn't treat or cure anything. Absolutely nothing. What's being re-established here is a relationship that is as old as life itself. And the knowledge of this particle and our biology is incredibly intimate. We just lost it. And when you put this in the body, it triggers the body to heal and clear everything. Right. I've had that sort of experience happening here in my first two bottles. I've had a uh, herpes infection in my life and it's blossomed many times years ago. And then then I thought I put it out of my body. And wouldn't you know it, as soon as I got on the product, <laughs> bang, it came through. And I'm thinking, yes. oh, look at you, bugger. You are doing retracing. 
<laughs> exactly. You are not the first to experience this, uh, this, Martin. And especially as I think you have, you use the more intense startup protocol. It really flushes these things out. Many of your listeners would understand the notion of a healing crisis with natural products. And you see that with this also. And in a sense, that's what Martin's describing here. His, uh, his uh, herpes was hiding away for whenever it could re-emerge and lo and behold is being flushed out and so you know it comes out of the body in the way that you're used to seeing it expressed and so uh, it has one last flourish you might say mm -hmm. yep hoists a flag on the pole and then burns exactly mm -hmm. yes you said those magical words which was dna repair that should be unpacked for people to understand better. Uh, sure. <clears throat> um, I'll try not to go too deep in that answer. But if you um, examine this uh, little particle of polycosinol, to use its technical name, um, I'm pretty clear now that this particle didn't originate on this planet, and it perhaps brought the template of biological life to this planet and so it knows all about our biology and when it's put in the body it's so far been demonstrated to produce a replica of the human genome within 97 percent and i suspect it's even closer than that and uh, its developer is currently having the more detailed work done to to investigate and verify this but the result of that is um, what happens when this is in the body is that uh, when this template, if you will, is triggered, then effectively there's the opportunity to compare the, hum the original blueprint, if you will, of our DNA with what we've actually got. And there are a number of reasons why our DNA might not be in its ideal state, optimum state, let's say. For example, we might have uh, genetic uh, elements that have come through from our parents that have been built up over generations. There might be environmental interference or there might be even intentional interference by uh, certain individuals. Let's leave it at that. The point being is when you put this in the body, it basically triggers a repair of your DNA back to the original template. And the developer of this product believes that when women are using this uh, broadly in the community, that the history of uh, genetic defects will disappear within a generation or so. Hmm. Well, okay. I, I understand our bodies are evolving through retrovirus injection into the blueprint, right? Um, Yes, that's the plan. <laughs> and so anyway, so I guess we could go, oh, I, I can relate to it through, say, like mechanics, where we have an automobile and we take a factory ready or factory produced car, and then we take it apart and go to the blueprint and we fine tune every component to, to a higher level, right? Yes. We yes. put it back yeah. together and we have a race car that looks like mom and dad's sedan. Yes. Yeah, so the kind of changes that a person could experience while on this product will be as unique as any one person because it's going to go and do their own individual retracing, I speculate, and it will do their individual fixing. So it will probably go to the whatever the immune system determines is the highest need, right? Yes, exactly that. And so, for example, if you have significantly elevated blood pressure, that can normalize within hours. Some people experience with the first spray that they feel lightheaded because their blood pressure is dropping instantly. They spray the first spray in their mouth. It's that profound. Whereas if somebody's only got mildly elevated blood pressure, it could take three months to normalize. The same with blood sugar. If someone's blood sugar is, you know, off the charts, it comes down to a very acceptable range literally within hours. It's extraordinary. Similarly, if you've got major heart issues, which you probably don't know about until you have a heart attack, it's just the way of heart things. If they are there, but incipient 
the body knows about them. And if that's the most life-threatening thing, the focus will be on that. And to hell with whatever you think ought to be being fixed, it gets on with what's the most important thing. And I find it amusing. Some people contact me and say, oh, I had this condition and, you know, I expected it to deal with it. I said, well, you probably have something more life-threatening that you don't know about. And that's what's being worked on. Just give it time. And lo and behold, these things get addressed. And some of the conditions can take months and indeed, I suspect, years to be resolved. For example, if you have Parkinson's disease, um, uh, which is triggered by an overactive vitamin D receptor, um, when that regulation of the vitamin D receptor comes into place, it takes about uh, six to eight months or so to deal with Parkinson's. Raghu, the developers, or Dr. Raghavan to be more official. Um, Raghu's mother actually had Parkinson's and she was in her 70s, I think, when she started to use the product. She used it for six months with no change, but by eight months she was cured. And Raghu tells this lovely story of uh, talking to her on a video call and she holds up a cup and says, see this? And he said, what? What are you showing me? It's a cup. She said, I can hold it still. I couldn't hold it before. Well, and he goes, ah. <laughs> oh, now you're normal. What am I supposed to notice about that? Exactly. <laughs> you know, the absence of, uh, of a problem. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. So, so the mechanism of action, I mean, when I'm reading through the benefits, it talks about vitamin C being somehow, I don't know, the pathways activated, perhaps even... Uh, recycling the vitamin C more efficiently? It's well, the truth is vitamin C normally doesn't get recycled in the body. Our bodies uh, throw away most of the vitamin C we consume because it doesn't recognize it as being its own. It's a little like uh, insulin. Science doesn't know why, but uh, if you take um, uh, supplemental insulin for uh, blood sugar issues, you need to take 20 times as much as the body uses to get the same result. No one knows why. And Raghu thinks the issue is, you know, we can look at insulin when we take it out of the body, but we don't really know what its structure is when it's inside the body. And also the body in some way recognizes it as its own. And so this also applies to vitamin C because historically the body uh, was able to uh, produce its own vitamin C. We lost genetically the ability to generate vitamin C in the body. I, I forget the number, let's say 2 million years ago, but I'm probably completely wrong. And we share that with primates and guinea pigs and some people have suggested fruit bats. I haven't gone and checked. Um, but the point is we don't have the mechanism to generate vitamin C in our bodies from glucose in the way other animals do. But what happens when you put this little particle in the body is it activates a process whereby the body can take the oxidized vitamin C, which has come in from our food, and convert it back into its own vitamin C. Now, when it does that, it recognizes that vitamin C as its own. It's endogenous. Again, I don't know what form it's in, but the body knows. And what's interesting is there's only a certain level of vitamin C you can get in the body through supplementation because the body oxidizes the rest almost instantly. Whereas when it's endogenous, if it needs very high levels of vitamin C for you know, immune reasons or who knows what reasons it, it requires at a particular time, it can sustain levels of vitamin C when it's effectively producing its own than you can ever do with supplementation. So this is part of the patents actually on the product because this is a, a unique characteristic of this extraordinary little piece of natural magic, as I call it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, similarly, the vitamin D pathway as well, right? Yes, this uh, substitutes for vitamin D in activating the vitamin D receptor. So you can forget any supplementation of vitamin D when you use this product because this is doing what that does. Raghu still recommends you get a bit of sunlight because that's producing natural vitamin D in the body and it's still, it's still good to have in his view. 
But if the vitamin D receptor is overactive, which happens in a range of conditions, I mentioned Parkinson's earlier and a, a range of autoimmune diseases and so on, arise from an overactive vitamin D receptor. If that receptor is overactive, vitamin D can do nothing. Whereas this little particle will turn down or off the vitamin D receptor such that it's operating at an optimal level. In other words, if it needs to turn it on, it turns it on. If it needs to turn it off, it turns it off. This is unheard of. And when you understand this particle is much older than vitamin D in evolutionary terms, I think in truth, this the vitamin D receptor is, is actually a polycosinol nanoparticle receptor and vitamin D came along as a substitute later in evolutionary terms um, because it regulates it. And not only does it regulate the vitamin D receptor, we have something like 48 or nine nuclear receptors in our cells. And uh, from Raghu's analysis, uh, he's satisfied that it regulates all of them. So it's really like the missing key to the functioning of our bodies that we didn't know was missing until it turned up. It's that profound. And this product is described in the Indian spiritual text, the Rig Veda of 5,600 years ago. So this is not new in that sense. We just, we just lost it. So um, the spiritual text would uh, point to that these ancient folks knew about this and absolutely about this and I, I i saw a story about a shrine in india where they are using either rice was it or some, it's some cane plant. sugar it's cane sugar cane sugar it's, that it's, they were dumping into this little uh, fountain that or lake correct. the story the story is a bit more interesting than that um the temple uh, is when you translate it i can't speak the uh, Tamil version of it, but it's, it means doctor's temple. It's the only Hindu temple that is dedicated to food. And the food it's dedicated to is unrefined uh, sugar from sugarcane, which the Indians call jaggery. And you can buy jaggery. Um, and it's recognized as having some significant health and healing properties. And so the devotees of that temple um, bless jaggery and throw it in the pond. There are no pathological bacteria in that pond. And the, the um, you could call it the folklore, the traditions of the temple say that the water of that pond can cure 4,448 diseases. And as Raghu says, he doesn't know how he got that number, but he's figured out uh, using his analysis of, uh, of nanosoma, how this can, can trigger the body to heal 4,448 diseases, exactly the same number. <laughs> yeah, I don't know how we count disease, but okay. Well, they're really, yeah, I agree with you. They're really just symptoms of a diseased yeah. Uh, immune and body functional system. Yeah. Oh, I agree with you completely. Well, so what's interesting to me, I mean, you're mentioning the uh, sugar cane, it's a raw sugar cane. Um, when I looked at, I, I went online and searched polycosanol just to see what comes up. And it says, well, it's in plants. It's, for example, in milk thistle, the silymarin, and it's in sugar cane, and it's in peanuts, and it's in a couple other plants. And, uh, and the industrial version of polycosanol has been tested as a, uh, well, analog to drugs to, uh, to deal with high cholesterol or, or lipid, dyslipidemia, which essentially is people not dealing with uh, glucose very well. Yes, that's, that's absolutely true. Polycosinol, as, as Raghu says, is in the sun-splashed areas of pretty much all plants, and it plays a range of roles uh, in, in nature. The other very common one is, uh, is unrefined rice. Um, and um, so what's different between this and, and those polycosinols? The key is when you take this and, and make it into a nano emulsion, uh, and stabilize it and put it in the body in that form, um, this magic happens. Unless you do that, um, you know, the relationship between uh, this and other large particulate uh, polycosinol is night and day.
Oh, so this this reminds me of the story of trying to put golf balls into water bottles, but the opening is too small for the golf balls. That's a perfect uh, illustration. These nanoparticles travel. You put five sprays in in your mouth once a day, and the nanoparticles pretty much instantly travel through the body. They play. They pay no regard to the blood system, uh, the gut system, the lymph system. The blood brain barrier, the the uh, protection of the of um, the bone marrow. If you get cancer in the bone marrow, nothing can get it out. Oh, except for nanosoma. Hmm. And so, uh, basically, it disregards the whole formal structure of the body, and it communicates directly with the cells. Right. So, therefore, this uh, the crude polycosanol from from the industrial process, um, the, the doctors have been testing 5, 10, 20, and 40 uh, milligrams per day dose. Whereas here we are dealing with, I don't know, sub one milligram in a daily dose, right? Yeah, two and a half milligrams is where we are. Two and a half milligram per mil is what this product is. Right. And it'll probably go lower. And it is interesting because Raghu started out at about 40 milligram and has gradually worked his way down. And it's pretty clear that certainly for many conditions, it, it operates at homeopathic levels. So, uh, you know, he's currently testing one milligram in India. I suspect we'll move there in a year or two. He thinks it'll go to half a milligram with time. I wouldn't be surprised if it gets to 0.1. And over time, that obviously helps the economics of the whole process. Um, and it's interesting. I mentioned the Rig Veda earlier because it's actually one of the places that Raghu had to look to be able to make this product because the first of it he made um, he knew what he needed to do uh, from uh, the research he'd done and so he he made his first product literally on his on his kitchen bench and he began to test it and work with it. And what he found was that the particles tended to clump. And in testing, it wasn't delivering the results he wanted. He had a broad spectrum of particle size and so on. And uh, he had the thought to check with a, a Vedic scholar uh, friend he has and asked him uh, what the word is in the Rig Veda that describes the water used in this product. And uh, he came back and said, ah, well, there are 280 different words in Sanskrit for water, which I find extraordinary, but that there you go. Extraordinary. And, uh, and he said, the word that's used for the water in this product is pristine water water from the mountains. In fact, quite specifically, it mentions the water, the melt waters from Mount Kailash, which is a mountain uh, in currently in, in Tibet or uh, China now, of course, um, where which is considered by um, certainly the, the Hindus and I suspect a lot of uh, Buddhist traditions to be the earthly home of Shiva. And uh, it's a mountain you're not allowed to climb, but you can walk around it. And intriguingly, in 2017, I received a call from a yogi friend of mine who said, uh, um, my family planned to go and walk around Mount Kailash next year. Will you come? And the answer inside me was an instant yes. I said yes, and I went. I didn't know why I was going. And whilst I was there, I didn't know. Now I do. How long a walk is that? Oh, the trip takes um, about uh, uh, 10 days in and, in and out, but the walk itself is three days. Okay. And, and I cheated the second day, which is a serious climb, and you're at serious, serious altitude. I, I was knocked out by the altitude, so I, I rode a little pony with a local tugging the pony up the hill. <laughs> yeah. but, uh, but I went, and uh, I, I could not fathom why I had been drawn to go and do this. You know, I, I've been walking a deeply spiritual path like you, Martin, for 30 odd years. And uh, so I do what I'm prompted to do. And I didn't know why. And I got no, I wondered if there'd be certain experiences that I, I'd have whilst I was there. Nothing. <laughs> okay, I guess there's a reason. Now I know. All right. Okay, so we're going back to the word pristine. And so. Yes. 
there's there's this water that has to be somehow structured correctly else it won't yes work. yes and unless uh unless you have the correct water um you get a very broad um, spectrum of particle size this particle is 50 nanometers plus or minus one nanometer and it's stable at that you know, it's been uh, on the shelf for eight years so far, and it's it's perfectly stable. Mm -hmm. And uh, Rogers found there are four countries you can get water to make it, they being Austria, Switzerland, Norway, and New Zealand, all mountainous countries. Yeah. And Switzerland proves to be ideal, A, because they have a pharmaceutical industry, so they've got the disciplines and structures to make it, but also the water right out of the tap, they treat the drinking water with ozone. So all organic material is cleared out of the water. So they just make this with the water right out of the tap in Switzerland. Okay, so the product starts in Switzerland then, and the, um, and the um, sugar cane, that's probably somewhere from the tropics, God willing. Uh, yes, I mean, um, Ragu effectively is organized sources for the raw materials. He doesn't process the, the sugar cane or whatever, but he's able to buy the uh, you know, it's an industrial product, albeit not in huge quantities, but it can be geared up as this starts to spread across the world, as it will inevitably do. Mm -hmm. um, so he buys the polycosinol, he buys the other ingredients, and uh, the product is formulated in Switzerland. And yeah. I buy it in bulk out of Switzerland. Uh, the bottle that Martin has there, I, I shipped the bulk to Utah and had it bottled and shipped to a warehouse in Nevada and it, and it gets shipped out of there. So that's the formula. So it's made in bulk in Switzerland for the world and it will continue to be that way, certainly for the foreseeable future. So uh, let's step back a little. Um, if you, this is a lipid and um, if you understand um, biology, biology can't exist without the lipid envelope that contains it. And so there's a lipid envelope at every level of biology, whether it be a virus. If we think about the COVID-19 image we are shown with the protein spikes out of it, the, um, um, spherical, the spherical envelope is lipid. Mm -hmm. Well, every and, cell is a bilipid layer, right? Correct. And indeed, our skin is a lipid. So mm -hmm. lipids encase biology on every scale. And so without the lipids, there is no biology, which tells us that the lipids came before biological life. They had to. Yeah, I guess, I guess the lipid is the sac that holds the cell together. Without it, it would just leak out. Correct. And it, it does a bit more than that. It's a communication interface as well. Um, you know, alerts the, what's inside the cell to, you know, what's in the local environment and, this, you know, warns it of uh, trouble ahead and things of that nature. So it's a little more sophisticated than just acting as a, as a neutral encasing process. What I was intrigued by is this. It looks totally ordinary. It looks totally pedestrian until you look very carefully what you've got. And you already explained it. It's the nano sizing of it and the selection of just the right mix in the right medium of the right size. Without, yes. Uh, without which you just have dirt. And the, and the key thing to understand is that the relationship of this particle with our biology is older than life itself. You know, it's, I'm satisfied that this particle brought the template of life to Earth, which is why when you put it in the body, it's able to produce a replica of the human genome. That's no accident. The fact that you put this in the body, it communicates, well, it regulates all of the 48 or 9 nuclear receptors in our cells. That's no accident either. And so there is this profound relationship which has been there since you know, uh, certainly human life started, and I suspect all life. And it's been there in the background in our food, in our unrefined food all the way along. Ordinary polycosinol has these nanoparticles in it. And in fact, that fact is, is what triggered Ragu to realize um, what he was looking for, because he was in India trying to figure out the answer. And he uh, one evening ran into an old school friend and he was talking to him about this. And he said, 
That's interesting because um, I do some work in a sugar factory. And when you look at the staff in the factory, it's only the management who suffer from metabolic syndrome, which is type 2 diabetes, elevated blood pressure and all the rest. None of the workers do. It's only the management. And Raga said, well, what's different? And he said, oh, the workers are not allowed to eat refined sugar. They have to eat the raw stuff. <laughs> They're punished by eating the slop. Exactly. Yes. And, that's, that's and, 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 there, was, and there was the answer. There was the light bulb moment. He said, ah, it's in, it's in the jaggery. So what is it? And he figured it was polycosinol pretty quickly. The only question is how it was working and what it was doing. Now, that was a journey in itself, but that was one of the light bulb moments. Well, it's been around for a while, and uh, Ragu has spent a lot of uh, energy on getting patents for it. Uh, yes, he's been on a journey um, on many levels. He really uh, completed the development of it maybe at least 10 years ago. Um, but it's, and there are really three forms of the product. We, I only have one at the moment, which is the spray. There is also a, a gel, which effectively is the spray uh, further processed into a gel form, um, which again is entirely consumable, but the best application for it is topical use because this is profound also for skin issues. Again, there's no health issue that this doesn't trigger the body to deal with. There are examples of people who've had over 80% of their bodies covered with psoriasis, all healed. Um, and there's also a cream, which is really a, a high-end beauty cream when you understand it, because one of the things that happens with this product is it reverses the aging process. Well, I better get some. <laughs> Yeah, so Raghu, just on that point, Raghu himself is now 69. He's been using it for probably 11 years now. He has a measured biological age now of 48, down from 51 two years ago. So his biological clock is running backwards and has been for a, a, over a decade. And uh, and so, well, you know, if you use too, this... Not too soon look, for me, then. Me either. <laughs> And, and so this relationship is profound um, with our biology. It's been whispering to us, you might say, whilst we were eating unrefined foods. But since our food has been refined, one of the things that gets taken out is polycosinol. Suddenly we've had an explosion of all manner of health issues, not the only cause, but certainly a factor. Mm -hmm. And so when you bring this back, boom, Right. Yeah, you mentioned it. I, I, in my lectures, talk about the five white markers of death, which is refined flour, refined sugar, refined salt, refined fat, and refined dairy. And sure enough, you, you mentioned rice, right? So if, if you refine the rice, you have stripped it. If you refine the sugar, you've stripped it, and so on, right? Yes, absolutely. Mm. Absolutely. And, um, you know, who knows whether there was a plan in all of this, I can't say. I mean, oh. I'm satisfied. I think I'm it's just ignorance, but who knows? There may be a higher plan. Well, certainly if you, if you look at the game of getting us out of the sun, you know, for, for fear of cancer, you know, that's absolutely an exercise of weakening our immune systems. Of that, I have absolutely right. no well, doubt. Well, we have, we have now upped the game by telling people that they must huddle indoors because we're already... Oh, absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. All, all complete nonsense. PSYOP of the first order. All right, awesome. I, I would like to actually talk about these. I, I read through the documents that uh, were a collection of various stories from the field, and they, they varied greatly. Like they were essentially stories like I had a pain over here and it fixed it. Or I had a skin problem over there and it fixed it. And I've had a internal condition of some sort and I no longer have those symptoms. So it truly seems to be a reversing as, as you outlined early on, uh, almost any sort of a problem. So part of the issue here, in my opinion, is that we have been encouraged to look at all of these manifestation of symptoms as being illnesses and conditions in and of themselves, rather than seeing them as pointers to 
what I would call an underlying dis-ease of the functioning of our immune and other systems. Right. And, and so what this is doing, you know, Raghu says, um, when you put this in the body, it's like uh, the godfather turning up and saying, hey, listen, I taught you guys two million years ago what to do. You've not been doing it now. Get on with it. Right. And quite and quite literally, that is what happens. And so right. the whole working of the body on so many levels is transformed. As I said, you know, the, the 48 nuclear receptors have not been regulated when this is not present in the body. You put it back in the body, suddenly they're all regulated. They jump to attention and do exactly as they're meant to do. And the choir master has turned up or the band master or whatever term you wish to use because that's its role in our biology we just lost it and when it comes back suddenly everything starts to work properly yep. and all these symptoms that arise when the system is not working properly disappear it's as simple and as profound as that and it's hard for us to accept that this is possible certainly no one inside the allopathic medical system can believe it unless they've already jumped outside of it and the same with medical scientists they can't hear this they can't imagine that this is possible yeah yeah, and so it's it's hard enough for Joe Average to accept it, let alone anybody that's uh, trained inside that system. But that's the truth of this. Right. That's the well, truth of this. I mean, I've been toying with the functional medicine model for years, and it's, oh, yeah, right. Let me remind myself when we step back from the organ level down to the cellular level, we stop talking about symptoms. We start talking about function. And when we correct function, symptoms dissolve. Perfect. All right. Well, so there we have it. So the practical approach, I ended up buying three bottles, first go, and uh, I used up the first bottle in a week, and second bottle in two weeks, and third bottle in four weeks. And uh, here I am um, <laughs> with new religion. <laughs> Well, let's let's say new spirituality. <laughs> oh yeah, that's a good word. Thank you for correcting it. I, I remember one of my favorite philosophers saying, uh, "Religion is what's left after spirituality left the house." Yeah, pretty much, pretty much. I my my view is fairly similar. I I look at religion as by and large as. Uh, uh, um, they are mechanisms that have been set up on the basis of exploiting our spirituality for the purposes of those who organize those religions for their power and control over us. If you understand that this particle uh, is older than life itself, and in fact, it came here from elsewhere, I have a little different view of this world than most because of my spiritual journey and in my view and in my understanding one of the reasons for the creation of our beautiful planet was as a final entrapment point for those who wish to manipulate and control those of the light and so it is no accident in my opinion that this little particle is coming forth in the middle of uh, let's say this world of lockdowns and and so on um, the, the greatest crisis that that our civilization has faced in in a while yes and and in my opinion it has been entirely created for the purposes of those who have created it and i see this little particle as a ninja particle if you're familiar with um uh, the martial artists practice where the martial yeah. artist effectively is using the power of those uh, coming to attack him um, to destroy them, to use that power. And in my opinion, this little particle is a ninja particle in that process. And I think that's what we will see in the next uh, year, two years, three years, as this flows out and people truly understand what this little particle does for our health. Right. Well, let's hope that people awake enough to understand what we just said, will see it as, oh, this is the ticket out of my concerns. It's exactly what it is. And it will be a gradual process. Those um, watching uh, your podcast, Martin, are on the leading edge of that. 
anybody who's watching your podcast will almost certainly be what I call an early adopter. And it is people like your audience who will relate to this, I have little doubt. And gradually, most of the people they will talk to will have uh, a cotton wool in their ears. They won't believe it's possible, but gradually it will spread out. Not overnight, but it will spread. Once you see the effects with your yes. eyes, you're unable to deny, right? The evidence is, it's very interesting. Uh, Raghu is an Indian um, and he has a deep respect for astrology. Um, uh, Vedic astrology and his astrologer has told him that this will spread person to person throughout the world and the evidence so far is uh, one person tells 10 others uh, this is the evidence out of Malaysia where it's been sold since 2015 so they have enough time to witness this and so this is the process and these kind of conversations are, are kind of speeding the process up, you might say. But I, I am seeing these kind of responses from people. Um, you know, people you've seen, you've read some of the testimonials, Martin, so you'll understand this. And uh, um, it will spread word of mouth. It will spread at the grassroots. This is how it will grow. It won't be out through the traditional uh, pathways for products that assist with health. Let's put it that way. Thank you for your time. And thank you for inviting me to join you. It's my pleasure. This is Life Enthusiast Podcast. My name is Martin. And we restore vitality to you and to the planet. Mm -hmm.